Hey everyone, welcome. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to add some tabs to a div. And by clicking on those tabs, we'll be able to change the content of the div. Not only change the text content, but also change the background color. And it'll appear as if we're clicking on a different layer. For example, here, we click on tab 2, we see the color changes, we see that it looks like this top tab is attached to the um, this rectangular div shape below it. If we click on 3, we see the same thing. In reality, though, these are all the same div, and we're just adjusting properties here. Right? And we're using the z-index property to raise and lower these three tabs, either above a parent component or below it. All right? And if that doesn't make sense to you now, it will once you see how, how we do it. So basically this is a video aimed at beginners. If you're fairly new to web development, you're somewhat comfortable with HTML and CSS and basic JavaScript, then I think you'll be able to follow along quite nicely. Anyway, I'm going to stop live server here. And I am using live server to um, spin up my web pages so that I can see changes in real time. If you don't have live server and you use video or VS Code, you can go into your extensions and type in live and it'll pop up quickly. It's a pretty popular extension. All right, so for now, go ahead and in a folder, create three files, an index.html file, a JavaScript file, and a style sheet file. All right, and then uh, we'll generate some basic boilerplate HTML code here. And we'll link our style sheet. We'll also add our JavaScript file. Good. All right, so the first thing we'll want to do is create a div that will wrap everything, that will contain everything. All right, and we'll just call that div for simplicity's sake, we'll give it an ID of wrapper. Okay, and in our style sheet, just to make it visible for us, and in order to see it, we'll need to actually spin up our server, so we'll use live server here. We'll get this blank white page, and as we add uh, content, we'll be able to see it here. So in your style sheet, use the wrapper selector. All right, we'll give that div a width of 600 pixels, a height of 400 pixels, and give it a border as well. <clears throat> All right, so there's our div, and we can move it down. We'll go ahead and use position to manipulate it. So we'll say from the top, we'll move it down 20%. And remember, positive numbers are downward and negative numbers are upward in the y direction. Horizontally, things are as usual. Positive is to the right and negative is to the left. So we'll move it left, say 10%. Okay, we'll set And then inside of our wrapper here, we'll add another div. And this is going to be our parent, right? Our tabs are going to be the children. And this parent, based on um, the Z indices of the parent and the tabs, will either be above or below those child elements. All right? And again, if you're not familiar with Z index, if you haven't used it much, you'll see how it works uh, shortly. So we'll just give this an ID of parent. All right, and again, Actually, so what we can do is we can borrow this code right here. Just cut it out and give it to the parent div. All right, so there it is. It's back. Let's give it a background color of beige. Be like a manila folder, basically. Good. And then inside of this, let's add some text. All right, so we can. <clears throat> add a text wrapper. Let's just give create a div and give it a, an ID of text area. Right, and we'll have an H1 element in there. 
give it a default value of item one. And then we'll have a very short description. This is item one. All right, and we don't really want it here at the top. We want it centered. So what we can do is just use a style, inline styles, that's fine. That'll center that. All right, and we'll just sort of shrink this down into a smaller box. So let's give it a width of say 300 pixels and a height of 150 pixels. I'll give it a border so we can see it. Right, and our parent we're going to make relative to our wrapper so we'll say position relative and then we'll use the, or we'll make the elements inside of this parent div have position absolute so that'll initially put them up in the top corner as you see it here that's what we can do is we can move it actually I don't think we need to do this let's just Say margin top 20%. Actually, let's just do this. All right, good. All right, so that centers it. It's easy enough. Okay, and then we can get rid of the border. We don't need that anymore. All right, now we'll want to add those uh, tabs to the top. So we'll use three buttons. All right, so in your HTML, right above the text area, let's go ahead and add three buttons. This will be tab one, this will be tab two, this will be tab three. And then we need unique IDs, so we'll have child one, child two, and child three. Okay, and we want these to be width 80 pixels and height 40 pixels. So go into your style sheet. All right, so these are three different IDs. So this will be child one. This will be child two. We could be doing things a little more efficiently, but we're just going through here and just kind of keeping things simple for now. And actually, we're not really going to get too much into how to make our code as um, you know, efficient as possible. We just want to see the basic way that this works so that you can quickly start extending it and using it on your own in your own project. All right, so we'll say here width of 80 pixels and height of 40. And we'll do that for all of them. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to move these up, right? And for now, what I'm going to do is I want to move these around using a position absolute. So once I do that, these are all going to collapse on top of each other. So.
All right, so you can see that that's what's happened. So for example, the first one is snug up against the top left edge, so we don't need to mess with that now. But for the second one, we'll move that out 80 pixels. So we'll move it from the left to the right. So we'll say 80 pixels. There, and then we need to do the same thing with tab three, but we need to move it twice as far. So we'll say from the left, 160 pixels. All right, now we need to move them all up, right? So we'll move them up 40 pixels so that their bottom edge rests against the top of the div right here. All right, but remember to move things upwards, you need to use a negative because positive upwards on the page is actually negative Y. You know, if you think of a Cartesian coordinate system, you've got your Y values reversed. All right, so they're all up there. Okay, and now maybe we don't want this to be in here. We want it to be snug up against the edge. But because these values are pushed inward by one pixel because this border is one pixel, we want to move it over a pixel. So for the first one, we'd move it over. We'd give it a position left negative one. Right, and that moves it over. All right, and say we want to have three, two, three pixels between tabs here. So these are 80 in width. So I want to go, say, 82. Actually, 82 would be only 81 over from the left because we've moved it left one. So let's make it 83. All right, and then we'll make this one 166. Actually, make it 167 to account for that one pixel. There you go. Okay, and we'll give these different background colors just to distinguish them from one another. So we'll leave the first one the same color as uh, the top layer, which is item one. The second layer, which is going to be tab two, which even though we're using the same div, it appears to look like it's resting underneath, or it appears to re be resting underneath this item one layer. So let's give that a color of light gray. And then for child three, we'll give it a background color of light steel blue. <clears throat> okay, and then tab one, we want a background color of beige. All right, and we'll control the border width here for each one. So we'll say border one pix and solid. So that gives us a nice thin border here. We'll do that for all of them. Okay, now it appears that each tab is resting underneath this div here, right? And we want tab one to look like it's at the same level because we want it to appear that it's part of this layer, right? Each tab is attached to its large rectangle beneath, right? Just like a, a filing cabinet, you know, setup might be. So if you go to the outer wrapper and you raise this above everything else using Z index, Z index, and we'll just give it a value of positive 10. Sorry. Then, since the parent is kind of in the middle of everything, we'll give it position initial. 
right? And then we'll want all of the children below, except for the, except for tab one for now. We'll say border, sorry, not border. Z, sorry about that. Z index minus 10, no pixels. All right, and we'll do that for all three tabs. All right, but again, we don't want tab one to be below. We want it to be at the same level. So since the top level here is at 10, you can make child one positive 10. Okay, now the only thing we need to do to make it blend in is make its bottom border the same color. All right, let's put it back at negative 10 so you can see what I'm talking about. So make border bottom beige one pix in beige. All right, that doesn't change anything, it still looks like it's underneath, but if we give this the same Z index as wrapper, then you can see we're good. Right? Our tab looks like it's at the same level. Right? So we'll need to do the border bottom setting for all of them, and we'll change the Z indices dynamically with JavaScript. But for now, child2 Give it a border bottom of one pix and its background color, which is light gray. And do the same thing for the third tab. And its border color will be light steel blue. <clears throat> okay, good. So they're still not clickable and we're not changing layers yet. So we'll do that now with the JavaScript. Again, here we have some default text, but we're going to need to create uh, some text objects or some objects that include text values so that we can dynamically toggle between them. So in your JavaScript file, let's create three objects. So we'll call the first one first. Right, it'll be an object. And just create three of them. This one will be second. And this one will be third. All right, so each object is going to contain a title and a short description, right? Basically, the text content for the layer that we're looking at. So for the first one, we'll just put in exactly what we see here, right? Item one, right? Because we don't want it to change from its default value. And description. This is item one. Don't forget the period. Okay, and now we'll think about all of the elements that we need to access, right? We're going to access each of these tabs, which are HTML buttons, right? We're going to want to access the text content so we can change it. And we'll also want to change the background color of this parent element or this element, this div with the idea of parent. By changing its color and its text content, it looks like we're toggling between layers here. All right, so first let's deal with the tabs. So we access this by using document, get element by ID, and its ID, which is child1. Right, this would be tab2, tab3, child2, and child3. Okay. Also, we'll need to access the title and the description. And again, the title and the description. All right, so let's make sure that these elements have the, the necessary IDs. 
So first here, this h1 was title, so we'll say id equals title. And this one here, description. Good. All right, so first we'll say let title And also we'll need to access the layer here, or the layers that correspond to each tab. So we'll say let layer equal document.getElementById, and this ID was parent, if you remember. Okay, now we'll need three functions to handle click events, and basically we're going to make these tabs clickable, because they're buttons, right? And when we click on each one, we have some event, right, where these the internal text changes as well as the background color. So we'll make a function first called show layer one. Alright. And well the first thing we we'll want to do is toggle the Z index values, right? So for example in layer one you need the Z index value for it to be at the same level as the wrapper, right, which was 10. And then tab 2 and tab 3 can be minus 10 just to stay buried beneath. All right, so we'll use tab 1 dot style dot Z index. And we'll set that equal to positive 10. Of course, by default it is, but once we switch over here, it's going to change, so we need to be able to change it back. So that's what this will do here. And then we'll need to do the same for all the tabs, except for give them different z-index values. All right, so tab 2 and tab 3 will be minus 10, both of them. Alright, and then of course we'll want to change the title. And we access that using inner HTML. And this will be, again, item one. Actually, we'll just use what we created up here. It'll be first.title. And then description dot inner HTML equals first dot description. Okay, and then we also need to change the background color. So we'll say layer dot style dot background color. All right, and this needs to equal beige. And actually what we can do is this. We can create one more field here. We'll just call it color beige. So this should be first dot color. Okay. All right, so that should be good. And we need to do this for each of the layers. So we create two more. So this will be show layer two. Show layer three. Okay, so for layer two, Tab 1 should have a Z index of minus 10, and layer or tab 2 should have a positive 10, because that one gets brought to the top. Tab 3 can stay the same. This changes to second, as does this, as does this. I'm sure you're probably working ahead of me now and changing the third one. So again, for the third one, make sure it's 
this third tab that gets the positive 10 value. And third dot title. Third dot description. And third dot color. Okay, so now all we need to do is make these buttons clickable, right? And that means adding event listeners to them, right? So we have these buttons already defined here, so we can just add event listeners to them right down below. So we can say tab one dot add event listener. It's a click event. And the function that we're going to call is show layer one. All right, we can do this for all three. So this will be tab two. And this will be tab three. And I think I, I realized that I forgot to do something. I think that when we click on tab two, we're still going to see a border at the bottom. It's not going to look like it's attached to the layer that we're saying it is. So if we click on it, and we're not setting the background color correctly here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is remove these borders just so we know we're actually clicking the, the tabs. So if we go back to child one, we see we made the bottom border the same color. Actually, we did that here, didn't we? And we're changing the Z index values. So we should be good that way. Okay, so I see one place where I made an error. Need to be tab two dot style. And since I just copied everything down below, that error got carried down. All right, are we good here? Tab two, tab three. So it looks like we're working. Okay, again, so we click tab one, it looks like we're on this layer. Right, the tab is attached to it, there's no border here. We click tab two, same thing, right? It looks like it's one continuous piece. The text content has changed, so it has the background color. And then tab three, same thing. Okay, so again, we didn't pay too much attention to styling here, but you get the point. And I think that you're gonna be able to use this functionality in your next uh, website or app, and it's gonna look really good. So I hope that this helped you, and uh, thanks for following along as always, and I will see you in the next video.